Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. So this is just a quick step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use Bondo. So I had a door and a door jam that needed to be repaired and I made a little video for you guys. So here it is. As you can see, needs a lot of work here, but that's what we're here for. I find a screwdriver the easiest way to get the lid off of these. Bondo board, just melamine, nothing sticks to it putty knife. You want a sharp blade that's reasonably long. So Bondo is nasty stuff you guys and if you have a mask it's a good idea. You're also going to want to knead the cream hardener tube stuff. So the ratio for Bondo is roughly a golf ball size amount to an inch and a quarter bead. So you'll see when I put the hardener on it's about an inch and a quarter. And mix it up. It actually mixes pretty evenly. Something about the chemicals just love to all get together and have a party. So here you can see I'm cleaning off my knife, mixing. You want to clean off your knife because what's going to happen is you're going to have a bunch of unmixed Bondo on the knife. So if you just mix on the board like that and don't clean off the edges, then you're going to wind up with a big clump of gray unmixed Bondo in your mix. So you can see it's starting to get mixed thoroughly here. We'll give it one more quick once over. Apply liberally to affected area. So I'm mostly just worried about filling the holes and the voids here and just getting the stuff on there and being able to work with it. You've only got a few minutes working time with this stuff, especially on a hot summer day like it is here. So you want to make sure you get your Bondo on the whole area that you're working on. It's going to take a few coats here. so. Just get the stuff on as quick as possible and don't worry about it being too pretty yet. I got a trick for being able to shave it off instead of having to sand a big thick lumpy mess. I'm mostly worried about the big voids at this point because all the little screw holes, like I said, it's going to get a few coats so you don't have to worry about that at this point. And I'm just going to use the leftover material here to fill this big hole up here. You want to keep your tools clean. So what I've got here is I've got my long knife and I just shave off the stuff as it's setting up off my blade. Because right at this point you can't really sand it without gumming up your sandpaper. So I've shaved it off and then I'm just cleaning off the knife blade by running it over this piece of wood. However, don't waste time cleaning because there's a magic state of Bondo here where it's just kicking off and it's plasticky so I can shave it down with a knife. And it's really important because like I said, I lumped it on, right? And you want to make sure that you can get back to this stuff and shave it down while it's in this plasticky moldable state. Because in about five more minutes, it's going to be hard as a rock and you won't be able to shave off all these lumpy edges that you left on. So it's a critical stage that you want to make sure you don't miss. You can see I'm able to knock off all the bulges with my knife right now. And this is why you want that long, sharp blade. So I'm not sanding this first coat. I'm just shaving it all down. Time to mix up another batch. Wash, rinse, repeat. So it's all about building up the multiple layers to eventually get the profile and the shapes you're looking for. So again, just coat, smooth it down, leave it nice and thin. So that's my trick anyways, is I like to leave it nice and thin. Actually, I suppose that's not entirely true. I like to leave the bulk of it thin, but the corners, because they needed so much repair and building out, I leave the corners kind of falling off of it like so. And those I shave off with a knife, and the bulk of the work I leave very thin. So it's a bit tricky to learn how to leave those corners a little bit full, but with time and practice you can get the hang of it. And before the Bondo kicks off, get that stuff on the door, man. Again, using my excess to fill the bigger voids. Once again, shave off that excess with your sharp knife.
At this point too, I'm also going to start sanding it just to knock off the real rough spots and boogers so that my next coats go nice and smooth because it really sucks when you've got a nice smooth patch of Bondo and then you start getting all these little crumbs in it that make a mess of it. So just a real quick sand. It's still barely sandable at this point, but I just find this helps the next coat go on really smooth. And brush the dust off with an old paint brush or a whisk or whatever you got handy. That way it adheres properly. I'm just cleaning off my Bondo board real quick too. I'm going to sand off my blade as well because you can get boogers from the Bondo boards and the blades too. Don't cut yourself. Okay, so that was great, but what about something that has more profiles, more detail? Well, it's basically the same thing, just slightly more complicated. So I had this edge of the door that I was kind of ignoring and then realizing, of course, I'm going to have to patch this, this giant piece of casing that's missing because it's going to cause me problems when I go to install the deadbolt and there's nothing there for me to put the deadbolt into. So once I got my filler chunk installed and the excess wood shaved off, now I've got something I can work with, a profile that I can start to shape. It's also time to get another coat on this door. And then I'm planning again to use the excess on that new patch that I started. It's all about multiple thin layers, getting it nice and smooth until you finally rebuilt that door into something you can work with. Door, car, cabinet, whatever the heck it is you're working on. So I actually spent too much time on the door and missed my timing. So here I am trying to smear some Bondo that's kicking off onto this spot, which was especially difficult in the profile. As you can see, it's become unworkable over the course of about 30 seconds. Not a good idea to try to force this stuff in because it loses adhesion too as it becomes less movable. Once again, shave off your excess in preparation for the next coat. And I'm getting my knife blade right into the corners because there's a couple of profiles in this repair. And remember, don't fuss too much on the beginning coats. The main thing is that you don't overbuild it and leave too much excess material that has to be sanded. Shaving it down with a knife is so much easier than sanding. I'm going to start on this one this time because it takes a little more time. Working it all into the cracks and trying to build up something that I can work with. It's a bit tricky to get it into all the right crevices, but all the drywall work that I do kind of helps me have a little bit of putty knife skills. The door is now at the point where I'm just going to sand it instead of shave off excess. So at this point I'm going to use a block, because using a hard block makes it sand really flat and smooth and really helps shave down the inconsistencies even better. The deadbolt latch patch is still at knife stage, however. As you can see, I'm carefully shaving out inside to try and get that inside corner profile. That's the hardest bit to get. And I'm also carefully chamfering the edge now. I'm also at this stage going to start using the sandpaper on the block because I really want to plane this down and make sure that none of this starts getting built up higher than the surface. So I'm wrapping that sandpaper around and I'm now getting it right in the corner to start carving out that profile. And I've now taken the folded piece of sandpaper and I've gotten right into the corner to sharpen it up a little bit. Again, I'm just making sure that there's no more boogers in there, nothing sticking out past the surface that's going to make me build it out too much. Coat number three for the profile part. So I'm just loading the material on there and then working with it once it's on there. I'm taking my time to just make sure all the voids are filled and that it's going to be a nice smooth process and I don't have to over sand when I'm done this one. 
I've got all the material loaded on and now I'm just doing some quick finish passes keeping in mind that I can either shave or sand some of those bulging edges. And at this point I'm also using the excess to skim coat the door, but I believe I forgot to keep filming that. So I built up the corners pretty good and I'm still working to shave down the profiles with a knife. So this is just the bulk shaving before I start getting into the finer sanding. I'm trying to make sure I don't cut off too much so that I don't wind up back at the fill stage because we're just about at the smooth finish stages. Shaving out those corners. I'm generally doing this by eye. Using the block with the paper again. So it's a lot like sanding drywall. It's really hard to sand. Working on that radius now. Actually, you guys, this is my finish coat I'm realizing, because I'm still sanding it. So I'm just working real hard to slowly shave it all down till it's flat. That's it. Profile rebuilt. Ready to get on with the door install. So that's how I like to use Bondo, you guys. It's a pretty simple process once you get the hang of it. I hope you guys found this video useful. Thanks for checking out Vancouver Carpenter, and let me know what you thought in the comments. Anyways, thanks for watching, you guys. Till the next video.